Well, hey everybody, this is Maggie Moore, the online campus pastor here at Emmanuel Church. And I just wanna say welcome and thank you so much for joining us for our online experience today. Our mission here at Emmanuel is to engage everyone everywhere. And one of the greatest ways that you can help us with that is by participating in the online chat today. We have eChurch volunteers who are ready to pray for you, ready to talk with you, and ready to connect with you and learn how we can best serve you during today's experience. Again, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us. We hope you have a great experience. Come on, Matthew chapter 26, just a few verses of scripture and we're going to get into it today. Matthew 26, starting at verse 36, says this, Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and he prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. I want to draw your attention to verse 38 one more time. <clears throat> then he said to his disciples, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. To the point of death. I want to talk to you the next few minutes, a message entitled, Pressure Points pressure points. Let's pray together. Father, Holy Spirit, we ask that you'd continue to illuminate your word in this place today. Thank you for the spirit of God that we feel and we have experienced already in this house today. Now, God, as we have praised you this Palm Sunday, would you open our hearts wide open to see with eyes and to, with ears to hear, God, what your word would have to say to us today. Illuminate your word in Jesus' name. God, give me the words to say today that it would come from you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, come on, point at your neighbor on your way down and tell them pressure points. And then you may be seated today. I want to tell you a story about a friend of mine named Sam. His name is not really Sam, but for the purpose of the story, I will not disclose his identity. Everybody say, hi, Sam. His name is Sam. Sam's got an interesting story. Sam's story is not like everybody else. Sam is an ex-Marine, came up in the Marines, spent several years in the Marine, and went into uh, forms of law enforcement and homeland security, did all of these things. Sam's a, just a great guy. I've known him for years. And one day Sam came to me and he told me this. He said, hey, listen, Pastor, I need you to pray for me because uh, I'm applying for a position that it's going to be a long shot for me to get. I don't know if I'm going to get it or not. So be praying for him. I said, absolutely, I'll pray for you. So several months goes by. I never heard anything. And he came to me. I'm talking to you like a long time had passed. And he came to me and said, hey, pastor, I want you to know I got the position. I said, man, that's awesome. What position is it? He told me this. I can't tell you. I said, oh, some James Bond stuff going on. Okay, 007. Okay. And so I started calling him uh, James Bond. He's like, I can't tell you. I'm in protection. That's all I can tell you. And, and so I, I'm not going to disclose what he does, but I will tell you this. This dude is one bad mamma jamma. Like, dude is like a bad mamma jamma. And I always, I always tease him all the time because, you know, I like to have fun. And I'll go up to him. I'm like, oh, you want some of this? James Bond, you want some of Pat Pastor? We'll put it on you, boy. And I start joking around because we've known each other a long time. I start pushing on and stuff like that and just joking around and grabbing home. And, yo, he does some crazy stuff to me. I don't even know why I even put myself in this position, y'all. This one time I was joking around with him and I grabbed him up. I was trying to joke around. This dude took one finger and stuck it in my throat right here. Right in it, right in this position, right here, where right, right in the throat, where where my chest bone me, and he like started pressing behind my behind my my, my chest bone. I was like, oh. I mean, I dropped like a like a box of rocks, y'all. Just... One time I was getting after dude grabbed my wrist and did some crazy move. I mean, he barely put put any put put any effort into it. Had me all twisted up like a pretzel, y'all. And you know what he always told me every time another he said the pressure points. 
every single thing. He grabbed one time behind the jaw right here. I thought he was going to rip my jawbone out. He kept saying, pressure points. Isn't it interesting when you get in those times, look for the the pressure points. Some of you all know what pressure points is because... Because you got that sciatica thing going on in your back. You know what I'm talking about? That's why you keep getting up in the middle of my service when I'm preaching. And I'm thinking you're rude and you're like, Pastor, I'm not trying to be rude. It's just I got the whole sciatica. I say, excuses. (laughs) Excuses. I can't sit the whole time. Why? Because I got this pressure on my nerve and it just causes the pain. It's a pressure point. A pressure point. Point. The reason why I tell you that today is because it, it doesn't just have to do with your body, y'all. That it, it can come in different forms of your life. Do you know that? That every single one of us inside of this place or watching online, we all have pressure points. Matter of fact, look at your neighbor and ask them, what's your pressure point? I'm joking. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Don't answer that question. Don't, don't you dare tell me. I wonder what your pressure point is today. And when I talk about pressure points, what I mean by pressure points, I'm talking about, I'm talking about points of stress, levels of uncertainty. I'm talking about high limits on hurt and pain that seem excruciating. You ever have points in your life where the pressure is so great and the stress is so high that you wonder, I'm, I wonder if I can take any more of this stuff. Come on, you ever worked, walked into work on Monday morning and the pressure started right away and you were wondering, I don't know if I can take much more of these, but I have reached a threshold on the pressure and the stress of my life. You know what it is? It's pressure points. Now this sets up the scene and the scenario of our scripture today. That Jesus' earthly ministry has now come to an end. Jesus is about ready to fulfill his calling Of what he came for. He knew what was before him. He knew the agony and the stress and the pressure that was before. But just before the end begins, Jesus goes into the garden to agonize over and to become sorrowful over the thing that he's going to face in the near future. This is a point of pressure. The pressure is built up to so much stress and has reached a certain threshold in his own human body that if you read the same account over in the book of Luke, it says that the pressure was so great, it was so extraordinary and excruciating that Jesus sweat drops of blood. Then as you turn to the account in Matthew of what we read today, I want you to notice how Matthew says almost the same similar thing in verse 38. He says this, then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Now, please hear me today. You are not Christ. You are not carrying the sins of the world upon your shoulders. But it does beg me to ask the question today. Have you ever had points in your life where you were so stressed out and the pressure was so great on you that you felt like you were dying on the inside? That the stress has so accumulated and the pressure had mounted so much, you wonder, have I reached my final limit? I don't know if I can go another day dealing with the situation or the scenarios around me because the stress is so great. The pressure has compounded and is squeezing in on you. These are pressure points. What is your pressure point? What is the thing that gets you now, our pressure points are different for all people. I don't, I mean, for, for me, you might be different than me. If, if you're raising a kid, I'm preaching to some people that not only have teenagers, hello, you got toddlers and grown adult kids. Because I think the pressure never stops, does it? It's stressful raising kids in the current culture we are living in, somebody. How many know what I'm talking about? 
the pressures of life pushing on them. And it is hard as a parent knowing how to correct and how to inform in God without not screwing them up. And that's the problem. And that's where the pressure comes in. Am I guiding them enough? Or will they be sitting in a counselor's office one day saying, my dad was crazy. There is a fine balance, y'all, of what it looks like of how to be. But man, if I would have known it would have been this much pressure to raise kids these days, I would have stayed celibate. It's crazy. It's stressful. It's different. Even I know I know I, know I look like I'm 25, y'all. I'm 42 years old. And it's, it's different from when I was just a teenager, y'all. How many know what I'm talking about? The stuff that they've got to deal with from social media to bullying to the access of drugs and alcohol at an alarming rate. No wonder addictions are rising. Teenage suicide is rising. It is stressful out there in the streets, y'all. Y'all know what I'm talking about? There is a pressure that is compounding. But maybe for you it's not kids. Maybe for you, your pressure point is your job. You are so stressed out over your place of employment that you can't even get through a church service without checking your emails. You are no longer able to live life to its fullest because you are full of your career. And it is crushing you because it's just stressful and it's squeezing the life right out of you. For many of us, your pressure point, maybe it's a job. Maybe what is stressful for you is the fear of the unknown. And it's pressure. Not knowing what the future holds. Come on, y'all seen the stock market? You've seen the world in which we live in? What's it going to look like 20 years from now? There is so much uncertainty that it can add a sense of stress or pressure on us all. I don't know what it is for you. Are those your pressure points? Maybe, maybe pressure point. Maybe for you it's dating. And you're trying to get your MRS degree. Some of y'all just getting that. You're trying to find your mans is what I'm talking about. You're trying to find your wife. You even joined the greeting team at church. Can't pick one out. It's pressure. God, am I going to live here by myself my whole life? I want to have a family. I want to have kids. But I can't find the right poor person. And the stress is do I settle with someone I know I shouldn't be with or experience the stress of the unknown if I'll ever meet them or not. That's pressure. Look at your neighbor and ask him, what's your pressure point? I think I struck a nerve. I think I struck a nerve with something I described today. It looks different for different people. So I want to point a few things out when it comes to pressure from Matthew chapter 26. I want you to notice Jesus... At his most stressful point, goes into the Garden of Gethsemane and he takes his disciples with him. But I want you to notice that not everybody went to certain places in the garden with him. He took all his disciples in, but then he tells certain ones, I want you to stay here. And then he looked at other certain ones and he took them a step further. Look what it says in the scripture in verse 37. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, James and John, along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. And then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He takes Peter, James, and John along with him, and he tells everybody else, stay where you are. And he takes them, and watch this, he confides in them his greatest concerns under his greatest pressure. Did you know that about Jesus? Because sometimes we have this picture of Jesus that we think that Jesus would long to be alone. That Jesus would want to stay by himself all the time. But what we find in this passage is when Jesus is under the greatest amount of pressure, he wanted companionship 
and company around him at the time of his greatest pressure. Why? Because Jesus knew better than we do at times that company and companionship is always a good thing when you are dealing with the internal conflict of your greatest pressure. That's the first thing I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you about people. I want to talk to you about people. Now, 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 correct me if I'm wrong, y'all. Correct me if I'm wrong. If Christ needed company and Christ wanted companionship with people, what does that tell me about you and I, y'all? Here's what I'm trying to say. In pressure, you need people. You got to have the right company in your corner to connect with because here is the truth. You cannot do pressure by yourself. Get your pride and your ego out of the way. Quit trying to carry the weight of the world on your shoulders and being silent in your own stress. You cannot do it on your own. You have to have, in times of pressure, trusted people that you can go to and say, I need you to keep watch with me. I need you to sit with me. I need you to be around me because I cannot bear this on my own. You got to have people to go to in the seasons of pressure in your garden who will keep watch with you and not just want something from you. Someone you can talk to that will not take advantage of. You've got to have the because there's something about knowing that you are not alone that gives you the ability to face and figure out what is best In times of pressure that seems to be building and mounting over your life. No wonder, y'all, the enemy wants to tempt us in times of pressure to stay isolated, secluded, and alone away from everybody else. Because he wants you to live in a constant state of self-delusion. That nobody else gets to the point of pressure that I'm facing. After all, look at the Facebook post. Look at Instagram. Everybody else's world is perfect. Nobody deals with the stress or the pressure that I'm under. Nobody else can relate to me. So I got to keep the stress to myself and not talk about the difficulties or the pressure I'm under. Because nobody else will understand. But what you fail to recognize is that if the pressure continues to build, it will blow. If the pressure continues to mount, it's got nowhere to go but to begin to leak out and ooze out. Stress will always find itself out in the most difficult, weird ways. Have you ever noticed with somebody's response at times where you understand that the way they're responding, the issue is not the issue? There is something else boiling and pressurized beneath the surface you know why because they have not released it am I preaching truth today are y'all getting this here's what I want you to recognize relationships are your release they are the pressure points to say I cannot let this build any longer I need companionship I've got to have some company because if I don't this very thing will crush me now notice you've got to have the right people to release to some of us have pushed the right people away and brought the wrong people close And they are causing more pressure and stress in your life than the situation or the scenario that you're dealing with. Now I'm preaching truth. Now I'm coming down your street today. You got the wrong people at the different points of your life. And they are adding more stress than taking it away. Here's what I found about a lot of us. Here's what I've found about a lot of us under stress. A lot of times, we have a lack of compassion for other people's pressure because we think we are beyond their level. Can I say it a different way? We will minimize other people's misery 
Because we have graduated and moved beyond the very thing that they are dealing with. Can I tell you today that pressure is relative. Regardless if you are 16 or 60, you have to have enough compassion to look at the company in your life and put yourself inside their shoes in the moment they're in and sympathize with the misery they are moved by. A sense of compassion for understanding what somebody else is sitting under. To recognize and to sympathize. Which leads me to ask this question. What kind of person are you to people who are under pressure? Are you the person that points out hope? Are you the kind of person that points out gratitude in the midst of difficulty? Are you the type of person that will point out what God can do and what we will do when we remain faithful to his word? Because when you get around that right kind of company, let me tell you what's going to happen. When they begin to encourage, it will bring courage. When those type of people begin to to bring courage, confidence you know what it does to you it'll bring confidence in your situation when they bring context so you see it differently than the way you do now it begins to give you context on the bigger frame of picture you need those types of people that will point those things out in your life while you're under pressure Matter of fact, I'm going to take it a step further. Sometimes you don't even need to be a person that points out anything. Sometimes you just got to sit with them inside of their misery. Sometimes you just got to pull up a chair and say, say whatever you want, however you want to say it. No judgment from me. I'm going to keep watch with you. I'm going to look over you. I'm going to look at you and say, you good? You need to talk? No, i just sit here on the phone with you. I'll just sit and rise up, Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, whatever your favorite coffee place is. I'll be your company over coffee. And I'll pay for it. Someone like, I don't know about that far, preacher. It's worth $5 to be that kind of company to somebody, to look over them, watch them, and say, You good? You good? You all right? Because I'm here for you. So Jesus goes into the Garden of Gethsemane. He takes all of his disciples in. He tells a certain group of them, you stay right here. He takes Peter, James, and John a little bit further. But then Jesus says, pray. And then he moves on by himself. Why? Because there are some points of pressure that other people can't help you with. There is some conflicts of stress and pressure in the inside of you that you've got to deal with on your own, on the internal parts of your own heart. That pressure is working on you, and nobody else can help you. You can have the right company. You can talk. You can communicate, and that will release a lot of stress. But there are things inside of you that God wants you to process inside of your own heart. So Jesus says, stay here, I'm going on by myself. And Jesus begins to pray under pressure. Jesus says this, going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and he prayed, my father, if it's possible, may this cup be taken from me. If it's possible, let this pressure pass. The cup Jesus is talking about is the cross. The cup is the sinfulness of humanity that has compounded and pressed down upon his shoulders that he know is coming. Being beaten, being bruised, dying on the cross for the sins of us all, being mocked. But most of all, that the Father would turn himself away as the sins of humanity was pressed on him. That separation was hard.
And so Jesus communicates, if it's possible, let the pressure pass. Now please hear me today. Jesus is not wrestling with God's will or trying to leave it. Matter of fact, he is not escaping it. He's accepting it. However, in this very moment, Jesus is dealing with his dual nature. Humanity and divinity, both fully God and fully human, both at the same time. This is the conflict happening inside of Jesus that he is dealing with this difficulty. He's divided, y'all. Because one side, his humanity feels the weight and the pressure and the agony and the suffering that he's about ready to go through. But yet his other side, the divinity, understands the mission that needs to be accomplished and the purpose that is set out in front of him that's been placed through the cross and his death. He understands that. He's divided. So at this place of division, of his greatest pressure, he begins to posture himself through prayer. Aligning himself with the Father's will. That's the second thing I want, I want to talk to you about. Posture. I want to talk to you about posture. Because here's the thing. When dealing with points of pressure in your life, we are divided on the inside. But it's different than Jesus. You know why? Because of our sin. Jesus was sinless. We are sinful. Jesus was empty of pride. We are full of it. So we are dealing with With being, with being different in this situation of being divided because we are different than Jesus. And where we are divided on the inside is between our humanity and the Holy Spirit that's inside of me. I am divided on the inside between humanity and the Holy Spirit inside of me. And this is what I have found out, y'all. Are y'all listening to me? This is what I found out in 42 years of my life. There are a lot of moments where we put pressure on ourselves because of our own humanity. Our humanity will put pressure to perform to a level of expectation of what we want out of life. It's a pressure to perform and produce to a level of expectation of the way we think life should go according to our will. Of what we want and how things should go and how things should look like and the way things should play out. This is the pressure that culminates in the conflict inside of us of our own humanity of I really want things according to my will Based on of that expectation of what I think I need and what I want in the moment I'm in it, this is the pressure of expectation. My goodness, I wish I could take 30 minutes and sit right here on this point, y'all, but I only got a few, so I'm going to skip it real quick. But I do want to say this, there is a pressure and a level of expectation to have the American dream. A pressure to own the white picket fence with the perfect house and drive the car that the Joneses are driving down the street and I've got to keep up with them so I've got to go get what they drive and live in the neighborhood they live in and I've got to have and culminate and collect all these things because this is what the American dream tells us we ought to have. This is what we need and so there's an expectation placed upon us and then once we get it, we live under the pressure of it. Can I break it down real simple for you? Some of us go in debt to get something we don't even need. 
to live up to an expectation of what we think we want, but we don't even need it. Because once you own it, it not only gives you the pressure of it, then it keeps you wanting more to keep up with everybody else. I got to live up to the expectation. I got to make everything look pretty. Everything's got to be perfect. And there are some of us who are living under that stress of those things. And it's only stressing you out even more. Pressure. 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 When you try to carry that level of expectation in life of what you want, it'll crush you. Some of us are carrying burdens in our life that we cannot bear. And we've put it on ourselves. Some of us are carrying crosses we were never even meant to carry. Put points of pressure on ourselves. We have no business being bear bearing that burden, no business being in those types of positions in our life and yet it continues to crush us a pressure to perform to a standard and an expectation that is not true to your purpose and you know what happens when we're under that pressure we start pointing at others Bitterness starts to come in. I start pointing at others. Then shame comes in. I start pointing at myself. What was wrong with you? And that's when the enemy loves to come in. Because then he'll just take that point and stick it even further. But I want you to notice the posture of the prayer of what Jesus says. Did you notice the posture? I want you to notice the posture of what Jesus is beginning to pray. Not only, watch this, spiritually, but even physically. In verse 39, going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and he prayed. My father, if it's possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet, not as I will, but as you will. First of all, did you see that a posture of falling on your face and going to the ground is a posture of surrender and submission? And then Jesus praised the words that we all know. Yet, not my will, but your will. You know what that yet means? That yet means he is yielding. That yet means he is surrendering and submitting himself to whatever the father wants. He postures himself physically on the ground and he postures himself spiritually by yielding his own wants, his own needs and saying it's not about me, it's about what you want God. What we see is this, when he postures himself in surrender and submission, it is not a form of weakness. It is actually his greatest form of strength. In the moment he needed it the most. In the moment he needed it the most is where God gave him his greatest strength. Some of us need to know today that surrender the posture of surrender and submission to the power of the Holy Spirit inside of you is not a point of weakness. It is the starting point to your greatest strength. When you get to a posture where you really, I mean physically, fall down on your knees as a sign of submission and surrender and tell God this, God, I yield my yet. 
I yield what I want. All these levels of expectation that I have put on myself of what I want on my life, of the way I think things should go, of what I think I should have, and how I think everything should play out. I yield all of that. I surrender myself to you, God, and I tell you, not my will, but your will be done. I align my life, not with my expectation, but what you want for my life, God. I am not living my life for the world. I'm living my life for your will. And it's whatever you want. Whatever you want, God. Whatever your will is. You know what happens when you posture yourself in this position? When you postured yourself in submission and surrender, there is a power. There is a persistence. There is a perseverance, a sustainability in any sorrow, in any stress, in any pressure that will give you what you need to walk out. God's will, whatever it may be. Have you ever experienced it before? That's why Jesus humbled himself, even to a point of a servant, so that God could lift him up. Didn't he say that the last shall be first and the first should be last? When you submit, when you surrender, when you say, God, whatever, God will begin to lift you up with power and perseverance to the point you're able to walk out God's will, whatever it may be, whatever comes, whatever situation, whatever scenario, God gives me the strength and the power to do his will. Could it be today though? Could it be? Could it be? I know we got to go, but when does that ever stop me, y'all, from preaching? Could it be today? Could it be? Could it be? Could it, can I propose to you today? That your pressure is pointing you to the higher power. Do you understand today that sometimes God applies the pressure in order to put you in a position of posture to surrender and submit to whatever his will may be. Sometimes pressure points. Sometimes pressure points. Listen, don't ever believe anybody says God will not put more on you than you can bear. Eh. You took the Bible verse out of context. Read it again. God most certainly will put more on you than you can bear. For you to understand you weren't meant to bear it. Pressure points. Pressure is to show you it's not about you. Here it comes. Are you ready? Pressure points to where the power is. Pressure points to where the power is. So when you get in the greatest amount of pressure and stress, it is God pointing you to the place of submission and surrender. And when you do, it gives you access and supply to his greatest strength. To the power you need to walk it out, whatever you're in, and wherever you're at, pressure points. So if you're here today, hey, look, look, and pressure has been pointing at you. The enemy has been using the pressures to point at you. You know what you got to do in times of pressure? When it's when pressure. Is pointing. Point up. Not my will, God, whatever your will is. Point up. Not my level of expectation of how I think things should go according to my will. Point up. Whatever you want, God. Whatever you want, God. God has a way when you surrender to get you back up off the ground again. Come on, somebody. 
giving you the power to walk out his will. Point up. Point up. Point up. Point up, God. You know what else points up in your pressure? Praise points up. When I begin to open up my mouth and say whatever you want, God, whatever your will is, all the glory belongs to you. No matter where I'm at, I'm going to keep going according to your strength, according to your pressure and praise. Point up, point up, point up, point up. Tell somebody around, point up, point up, point up, point up, point up, point up. Matter of fact, I dare you to stand to your feet right now and point up and say, that's who I'm living for. That's who I'm walking with. That's where my strength comes from. That's where my power is. I'm not living for myself. I'm not living based on my own expectations. I'm not living the way the world tells me to live. I'm going to live, Father, for you and what your will is. Now give me the strength and supply to walk it out. Come on. Tell three people around you, tell them, point up, point up, point up, point up, come on, tell them, point up, that's where the power is, that's where the perseverance is, that's where the sainability is, you can't do it on your own, you got to point up, now praise them for the power, that when you point up, strength comes down, when you point up, peace comes down, when you point up, joy comes down, we ought to be grateful this Palm Sunday by pointing all things my, 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 my. I feel the Holy Spirit on this word today. Somebody's getting set free from stress. Come on, I feel like what's been pressing you down. Come on, the pressure is coming off. The stress is coming off when the praises go up. Mm. 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 I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. I feel what happens. Come on, when I get up above whatever I'm going through by pointing up, when I position my life around the Lord and not asking the Lord to position himself around me. When I point up. Mm. I'm glad I came to church on Palm Sunday. This is better than golf today. Oh my goodness. This is better than the ball field. This is better than all of it. To be with God's people. Dealing with different forms of stress and pressure. Together collectively, point up. Mm. Come on, you feel that burden lifting? You feel that yoke lifting? How many feel lighter in this place than when you came in today? Remain standing because I'm going to close out. I want you to see what the name of the place where he went was. He went to Gethsemane. Gethsemane. The Mount of Olives. Did you know that Gethsemane translated means oil press. It means place of pressing. I've been there when I went to Israel several years ago. I talked to you about that a couple of weeks ago. And it looked differently than what I thought when you walk into a garden in Gethsemane and there ain't no, uh, no pansies there. When there ain't no flowers there. I don't know what up, ferns. I don't even know what else. I even, it's all olive trees. It's all olives, y'all. That's in the garden of Gethsemane. Isn't it interesting that the garden is known as the press, a place of pressing or the oil press. Isn't it interesting of what is in the garden at that moment? Because the olive, what is interesting is how it was harvested. When it was ready, it was picked from the tree. It was put in an oil press. And pressure was applied. Because what they're looking for is the contents of what's coming from the core of the olive. And when you apply the pressure, that's when the oil begins to flow. Now olive oil is more than just putting it on your pan so your fried chicken don't stick. What olive oil was used for in that day, it was used for fuel. It was highly flammable. 
that they would use in their lamps. So the more you press the olive and you got the pulp out and you got the impurities out, the oil then was turned around at its purest form, was highly flammable, and it burned the brightest. So the process kept going over and over again where it continued to get pressed and pure and pure for the purpose of why it was picked in the first place. Isn't it prophetic that Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane under his greatest pressure so that when he was crushed and he was bruised and he was hung on the cross, that his greatest purpose would be resurrected on the third day, that he would burn the brightest for all of humanity to see that what crushed me didn't kill me. It actually serve for my greatest calling in the moment it was needed that's the last thing I want to talk I want to talk to you about process someone needs to know today that is being squeezed is being pressured and is being crushed you're in process that oftentimes God will press you in order to produce your greatest purpose that you have to be crushed for your greatest calling to come out. You know what God's trying to get? God's trying to get that oil out. God's trying, you know what oil represents? Oil represents anointing. Oil represents calling. Oil represents purpose. Sometimes God's got to crush you to get your calling out. Look at your neighbor and tell him, I might be crushed. But I'm not dead. God is resurrecting my purpose for something greater in my life. It's going to flow. It's going to burn the brightest. It's going to illuminate to everybody around us. The purpose not only for which I live, but the purpose of what Christ does inside of me. This is the process. God getting the impurities out, of God getting the pulp out, of God getting the pride out, of God getting the sin out, of God getting the selfishness out, of God getting your will out so that his purpose can come forth. Because pressure points. Pressure points. And you know where it's pointing us, y'all. It's pointing us up. Every head bowed and every eye closed today. Father, thank you for the Holy Spirit that's in this house. Thank you, God, for your people. Whoo! Man, what a day. Thank you for what you released over this house today. I just, I see it in the spirit. Burdens rising today. Stress levels coming off. Mm, Burdens rising. May we remember that, Lord. That at the greatest pressing point in history, the Garden of Gethsemane would become the greatest point of our greatest strength. You took the stripes on our behalf. You took the beating for us, oh God. Oh Lord, when they nailed you on that cross and they left you for dead, they didn't realize you'd get back up again. They didn't realize you'd get back up again and give us the strength to live for your will, oh God. To come up out of the grave of the dead places of our life. To be resurrected with you in spirit, oh Holy Spirit, because of your power in my weak places, in my pressure points. Come on, how many got help from this word today? Raise your hand, say, that's me, Pastor, nobody looking around, yep. Father, I pray for every person that has their hand raised today, right now, who's under a set of pressure, under a set of stress, under a sense of difficulty. May we be reminded of your words, my yoke is easy. suppressing they're in right now, whatever garden they're in, they're going through. Oh God. 
you minister to Jesus in that moment in the Garden of Gethsemane? Would you minister to their hearts even now, oh God? Well, thank you so much for joining us online at Emmanuel Church. Our hope is that this time of worship, word, and community was encouraging to you and your faith journey. Maybe you decided to accept Christ for the first time, chose to rededicate your life to Christ, or maybe you just have questions about what it looks like to become a follower of Jesus. If any of that is you today, I encourage you to text the message E-Decision to the number 77411 so someone from our team can reach out to you. We can answer any questions you have, pray with you, but most importantly, we can begin to walk alongside you in your faith journey today. Thanks again for joining us online at Emmanuel Church. I hope you have a great week.